photographer has been creating photographic collections for the Connecticut Forest and Park Association and Weir Farm National Historical Park here, where he has served as its visiting artist and other organizations. The work culminated in a photo history book Though he is still creating images of bucolic national parks, his unusual gritty urban images are gaining recognition and will be a part of group exhibits in Connecticut and in Scotland. My guest is Sia Morrow. Sia Morrow, hi, how are you? Very good, Ann, how are you? Very good, all right. You live in New York City, you did a lot of work in Connecticut, and when did you first pick up a camera? This Probably one not that one, or no. was it that one? No, it was Tell actually a little, uh, well, I was using a camera back in the... 70s, a <laughs> long time ago, film camera, Nikon, very complicated to use. Uh, but then I started picking up photography again, oh, I guess about 10, 15 years ago, a little point and shoot camera. I was just photographing for myself and I was doing uh, rock concerts at the time. So I would actually exhibit my snapshots at the concerts. And what was interesting was that people were buying, in some cases, more photos than my CDs. I wasn't sure if I was really happy about that, but in any case. Yeah, okay, so you're a musician too. Oh yes, okay. absolutely. That you, you have a whole lifetime. Yes, I do. Why did you pick the genre that you picked? Well, it kind of picked me actually. I was um, invited to do an artist in residence at Weir Farm National Historical Park, which straddles the towns of Wilton and Ridgefield in Connecticut. It's Connecticut's first national park. And so I spent a month there, kind of just trying to figure out what I'm gonna do in photography. I was photographing the park, and then the, the, the park itself actually got interested in my, my photos and they ended up commissioning me to do a proper photo shoot of the entire park basically. I did it for a few years photographing the interiors of the uh, historical structures there. And then one thing led to another. Other parks found out about the work I was doing and they asked me to do the same thing for them. So I photographed for instance Washington's headquarters. That's George Washington by the way. Uh, Theodore Roosevelt's a, a summer White House. Uh, the poet Longfellow, I photographed his home. So basically done a lot of photography up and down the north northeast. However, I also like to shoot the street. That's which right. which we'll get to. All right, let's go through some of your shots. Okay. This is you. Um, what are you saying here? <laughs> I'm just trying to be fun. I, you know what it is, a lot of artists sometimes take themselves a little too seriously. They use a lot of art speak and they get very deep about their photography. And I guess because of my rock and roll background, I like to subvert all that. Do you sing or play an instrument? Uh, both. Okay, yeah. good. Well, well, that's probably a whole nother show. All right, here's the book uh, that you so generously bought, brought in and are gonna give to me and I can't wait to go through it. Um, tell me about this shot. Oh, I love this. Uh, this is a photograph uh, on 6th Avenue. Uh, at the time I, ha I had a job in Midtown Manhattan and I didn't want to wait from one commission to the next to photograph. Sure. So I figured I'll just photograph during my walk from Penn Station to my job and then back from my job to Penn Station. So this is on 6th Avenue and what I did was I was actually shooting through those glass bus enclosures. And so what it does is it creates layers of image. And a lot of folks think I use Photoshop on that, but I didn't. It's actually, I was just going to ask you. Yeah, it's That's actually the real just deal. the real deal. So. It's a, oh, there's all this picture now, here. Now, who, who is this? Tell yeah, about so this, this is a, a very, uh, this picture is really important to me. Uh, this is a fellow named Manuel uh, Oliver, Manuel Oliver. And tragically, his son uh, was murdered during the Parkland shooting in Florida. Uh, I was at a rock concert in, uh, in Brooklyn. It was a band called The Specials from England. They had invited me to attend. And he was at the show. And he was trying to build support for uh, for anti-violence with you know among youth. He had a child killed. His son uh, was murdered during the shooting spree. So I saw him there, and I was really moved by his uh, his talk. He spent a couple of minutes on stage just talking about what happened. And so I just went up to him afterwards, and I just took his portrait right there in the nightclub. Didn't even use a flash. And what I love wow. about it is you can see the intensity in his eyes and in his face that he's really driven to achieve the goals that he set out for himself. Sure. All right, the next, this is a newsstand. Those are starting to disappear. Yeah, there's about 275 left to New York City, and during its heyday in the 1950s, there were 1,500 of them. So I like to refer to this as future history because 10 or 20 years from now, we probably won't see these anymore. Uh, this is currently on exhibit at the Glasgow um, Gallery of Photography in Scotland. And what I love about it is that the gentleman who's running the booth is practically 
you know, blending in there with the stuff he's selling. That's a great shot. All right, another street shot. Yeah, some of the uh, sh some of the shots they take are humorous. So this is just uh, some serendipity between uh, this gentleman who's walking past this sign, and it looks like she's falling in love with him. I just <laughs> love that moment. All right, next we have London. Yeah, so I like to shoot other cities that have things that reflect, and it's really hard to find that because New York has a lot of that, especially in Times Square. So the closest I can find was uh, Piccadilly Circle sure. in London, and so I was using the buses. The two uh, double-decker buses have a lot of glass in the windshield, so I worked off of that. This is going back to, or well, now we're back in New York. <laughs> this is Sixth Avenue near uh, Radio City. And again, these are reflections through bus shelters. There goes Adam Sandler. See, I, I photograph celebrities too. Was he there? No. <laughs> or you it just... looks like he was there. That's actually an advertisement for a movie that he was doing. I see. And it's reflecting off the glass. So what, when you work, and you have exhibits in Connecticut and in, and in Scotland, what do you want the message to be about who you are? Oh, um, someone who likes to be very observant about the human condition and what's happening in the world around us. A lot of times I photograph things that are actually pretty mundane. They're things that we see every single day. Uh, but depending on how I compose it and crop it, uh, it's almost like you're looking at it for the very first time. A really good example is the painter Monet, an impressionist painter. And he said, or he's attributed to have said, that uh, he wished he could go blind and then suddenly regain his vision so you can see everything fresh again. Because when we see things, we tend to impose something that we, a preconception. Mm -hmm. So a lot of my work is about revealing hidden beauty and revealing things that we just don't even notice from day to day because we're so busy, especially looking at our phones. Stop and smell the roses. Exactly. I appreciate you being here so much and pick up this book, Weir Farm National Historic Site. It's, it's a gorgeous book. Thank you, Sue Morrow, for Thank you for having in. me. Appreciate it. Take good care. And to learn more about his work and this book and his photographs, go to WTNH.com or the News 8 app.